name is Gail Erb. I'm the hostess of the new show on Access Channel 5 called Fresh Perspectives. Uh, this is our first episode this week, and uh, my guest for today is Bob Johnston, retired traffic engineering supervisor of the city of Jamestown, New York. And he's here to talk about uh, the trolley restoration project that he's working on. Now, Bob, I would like you to tell us uh, how you got interested in history. Uh, well, Gail, thanks uh, first of all for having me on your very first show. I'm really excited. Hope it all goes well. Um, I was uh, just out of college, uh, started developing an interest in local history. I like seeing how things used to be and aren't anymore. And uh, it escalated into collecting old photographs and postcards of the area. I have thousands of local photos and postcards and things like that. And I was first interested in the steamboats on Chautauqua Lake, and then I got into the trolleys after being at the, uh, the Y one day, playing basketball. Uh, Sam Lucarella was one of the guys on one of the teams there, and we got to talking about my interest in local history, and he told me about his parents having an actual Jamestown Street Railway trolley car on their property. So I said, I've got to see that. So that's where it sort of escalated. Is uh, this the only trolley still in existence from, well, um, um, from those days? What I'd like to say is there's, of the several hundred trolley cars that went around the county back during the trolley car era, which would be around 1860s, well, streetcar era, 1860s to uh, 1930s or so, uh, this is pretty much the only standalone one. I mean, there's some that were built into cottages and things like that, but so there's still bits and pieces of them around. But this is pretty much the only one that would have been a candidate. So out of the hundreds or several hundreds of trolley cars, this is pretty much it. If we don't save this one, then all of our county trolleys are pretty much gone. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was looking through that book uh, by Kenneth Springerth. Um, the one called Jamestown to Buffalo by Trolley. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that a large percentage of the pictures that were used in that book were provided by you. Okay. I, I've been collecting for a long time and uh, it's been kind of fun for me. And uh, Ken came out of the house one day, told me about the book he was writing. And I was able to uh, put together a nice group of pictures for him. And I did this, actually helped him with some of the research, some of the dates on some of the Trolley uh, uh, timeline were a little obscure in some of the other publications, so I wanted to nail down at least the ones related to uh, the Jamestown trolley so they were correct. And uh, if you go through Ken's book, he uh, pretty much gets those dates right where they need to be based on uh, newspaper art articles and things like that of the day. So, so, uh, so the trolley was donated to you by the uh, Lucarella family. Yeah, I, I basically I went and talked to Mrs. Lucarello and I, I told her my interest and I told her that if that trolley were there another winter it probably wouldn't make it. Mm -hmm. uh, and she was more than happy to let me take it. All she uh, required was I put a little plaque or something commemorating her husband uh, Mauro uh, Lucarello in the trolley somewhere which we plan on doing. So that's uh, Is that's Harriet a good... uh, still alive? Well she had been for quite a while but she passed away here not too long ago. Oh. So. oh. Uh, we did actually start the restoration project while she was around, but we didn't get to this point where we are. We're coming along pretty good right now. Yeah, she yeah. would have liked to have seen it. Yeah, I yeah. think so. I saw the pictures in uh, Kenneth Springer's book about when you had the trolley uh, pulled by a tractor to uh, the location where it is now at the train station. Yeah. And when I saw those pictures, I thought, wow, he really had his work cut yeah. out for him. Well, I, I do have uh, quite a bit of that on the, some of the pictures that I've included here, and, and we can start looking at those any time if you'd like and get to that fairly quickly if okay. you'd like. Okay, okay, so, uh, we might as well go ahead now. Okay. I, I would like to first just, I wanted to mention my other interest in history here. I, oh, I'm a okay. trustee with the Chautauqua County Historical Society. Oh, that's right. And that, yeah. that started here several years ago, and it's... Uh, it's really quite an amazing place, and, and it's open today uh, from uh, 10 to 4. It's up in Westfield, right in the park there. It, it's the home of the Chautauqua County Historical Society's collection at the McClure Museum, and it's a really a great place to see. And we're in the process right now of tearing down a lot of the old plaster and stuff because we have some structural issues. And if you want a, the opportunity to uh, uh, see how they built houses back in 1818, 1820, uh, sorry, that was my phone shutting off. <laughs> 
uh, it's, uh, it's really worth a visit. And it's a beautiful day today to go up and check that out. But yeah, here's my uh, slides, I guess. Uh, I guess I should go to the first slide. Uh, there were several trolley car lines throughout the county back in the, uh, starting in 1866 with the Dunkirk and Fredonia Street Railway. Uh, Jamestown Street Railway came along uh, with their horse-drawn cars in 1884. And uh, then uh, shortly after that, uh, well, here's, I guess I should use the slides as long as I have them. This is a, a, a picture from one of the early uh, Chautauqua County atlases showing a trolley going uh, between Dunkirk and Fredonia. There's a horse-drawn trolley there in the picture. And like I said, Jamestown started its own uh, uh, horse-drawn cars in 1884, which is quite a bit later, but uh, Governor Fenton actually is sitting on the trolley at the time. Uh, he was one of the first riders. Uh, governor Fenton is the uh, governor of New York State during the Civil War era. Um, and in 1891, they electrified the trolley lines. Uh, it was important. If you look at the picture closely, you can see a pole sticking out of the trolley there. And at the top of the pole, there's a little uh, wheel called a trolley wheel. And that rides on a bare wire and picks the electricity off the, the wire. And the electricity goes down the pole, down underneath the car, where the electric traction motor uh, made the uh, trolley go. And at that time, uh, they're actually called trolley cars. Before that, they're called street cars because street cars didn't have trolley poles like the uh, electrified ones did. And... Uh, there was quite a bit of activity uh, over the course of those years in, in trolley cars. It was the best way to go. The roads weren't that good, and you know people had to hook up their horse or take their carriage to uh, get where they wanted to go. And it uh, really was quite a, a, a lot of uh, effort. But uh, the trolley car just made that a whole heck of a lot simpler. People could just go out and catch the trolley and go downtown and come home. They didn't have to get muddy. They didn't have to get the horses out. They didn't have to do anything. So uh, it was quite a, a period of, of growth. But uh, Around 1926, uh, the Jamestown Street Railway was having trouble. They were competing with the buses and the uh, cars and all that type of thing. So they made a last ditch effort to uh, compete with them and they bought these eight uh, uh, trolley cars. Uh, they're uh, deluxe safety cars, they were called, because the interiors had all mahogany and they all looked nice. And they were trying to compete with the buses to, to keep the, the ridership going with the trolley cars. But you, know, you, Go ahead. you know, um, not only the mahogany interiors, but it said that they had dome lights in the center of the ceiling and thickly covered upholstery that was was covered with genuine Spanish leather. Yeah. It sounds very opulent. Yeah, they did it. Really did it up back then uh, for this particular car, especially because it was uh, an attempt to convince people that hey, this was still the way to go. You still need these trolleys. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you still need them. But unfortunately, I mean, here's how the trolley car actually worked in ac action up at the end of uh, this car went up and down Willard Street quite a bit, but it could go other places. It could go to Celeron. It could go as far as Westfield or Barcelona if it had to. Uh, but for the most part, it stayed on what they call Swede Hill in Jamestown. So uh, if you're of Swedish descent, uh, your uh, grandparents probably rode on this trolley at one time or another. But once again, the writing was on the wall for these things. And uh, this is a, a, a wonderful photograph uh, that pretty much shows the problems for that lowly little uh, icicle-laden trolley car over there in the corner because everybody had cars and the buses in the background there and everybody was vying for their spot on the road and it really pretty much was the end for the, uh, for the trolley cars, I think. And by 1938, the Jamestown Street Railway had decided to just give it up and they started st uh, taking all the, the metal and motors and wheels off the trolley cars. So. Um, and then from there, uh, the bodies were uh, sold. They ended up as cottages upon Chautauqua Lake. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Chautauqua Brick near Bemis Point. Oh, yes. Right across the street from there. That's where these trolley cars, if you look at the picture closely, you can see the, uh, the roofs of the trolley car. The original roofs were uh, made of canvas, uh, but uh, they did not last very long. Uh, they weren't really made to be outside all the time. So uh, they... Uh, put these heavy gable roofs on, as you can see in the picture there. And, uh, but you, can, you could have rented these things for the summer or for a week up on Chautauqua Lake for quite a few years back in the uh, late 40s and uh, early 50s. But uh, 
they stopped using them there uh, as cottages, and uh, what happened is this particular one found its way out uh, onto the Lucarello property, and it became uh, a hunting camp. And that uh, picture there shows you how, how we saw it uh, when I first uh, went up there with Sam Lucarello, and I said, Sam, where's the trolley? You know, that's what I said to him when we got up there in the <laughs> it woods. Looks, it looks a little bit like a cottage yeah. there, doesn't well, it? Well, it had a bathtub. You see the bathtub in the front and the refrigerator <laughs> in the front and all these other stuff. So they had to take their baths outside? No, I don't know. I don't know. It was probably for putting the dead deer in or something like that. I don't know what they were doing with it. But, you know, that was, it was in pretty rough shape, and, and, and there was just probably no way it had made it through another winter. If we had had a, a heavy snow that year, it would have the weight of everything on top of that thing would have pretty much crushed it down. And uh, there's a, an inside view of how it looked when I first walked into it. It was uh, bunk beds all over the place. This must have been the bunkhouse where the guys slept before they went out hunting the next day. But you can see uh, I spent some time uh, getting that gable roof off and stripping things down so you can see there actually is a trial. I moved the, uh, the bathtub and the refrigerator out of the way. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much what, uh, pretty sad sack. Uh, yeah, to say the least. Yeah. But uh, it uh, it was there, and uh, uh, we moved forward from that point. Uh, I got a hold of a couple guys <clears throat> out of Casadega, uh, John Brewer and his friend Mike. Uh, they said all I had to do was provide them with a little trailer, and uh, well, actually, I, I had to get a mobile home axle, and then he fashioned a trailer out of that, and we went up there that day. He had a big truck. We put the trailer under the trolley. He had to put the two together, and we pulled it out. Uh, looking at the picture, that's uh, when we first got out on a thumb road up near DeWittville. It that's, says, look, Mom, no tracks. Yeah, no <laughs> tracks. The trolley, uh, normally you needed tracks to move around, unless, of course, it was being hauled around by a, a nice uh, big truck. But uh, we got out onto the main road, and uh, here we are going through De uh, Bemis Point. Oh, yeah. We decided not to take the expressway. We were afraid we'd leave too many pieces there going 55 miles an hour flying down the expressway. Yeah, you never uh, know. <laughs> but, uh, and we thought we'd sneak into Jamestown and try to do it the back way. And uh, Bemis Point was a nice place to stop and get a picture and see the trolley cars coming back to Bemis because the JWNW line did go through Bemis Point uh, uh, back then. It sat at the uh, Jamestown bus garage for quite a few years while I was oh, still working. Yeah. and. Uh, uh, doing other things and really couldn't find the right guy to really help me get this thing started and get it restored. So uh, I did get a call from Lee Harkness in December of 2013. Lee was the uh, general manager at the Gateway train station in Jamestown. Oh, okay. He invited me to bring the trolley over to the uh, train station and we could start a restoration project there. Now, little did I know how, how big a deal that was going to be for us. Uh, <laughs> there we are getting the, the trolley into the train station. The, all yeah. the events that go on at the train station, uh, we were able to take advantage of a lot of it. We had uh, uh, the uh, uh, doors open Jamestown. We had uh, the Garden and Homes uh, show there and uh, uh, the actual uh, National Train Day we would have there. And these events brought lots of people uh, to do the things and we also uh, got a chance to expose people to the trolley and we took in a lot of donations during that period and uh, it uh, it brought Jim Michener uh, to the trolley and in, in the uh, National Train Day on May uh, 2014 is when Jim Michener there shown in the picture uh, he was a 86 year old craftsman at the time uh, a contractor most of his life he restored boats and cars and jeeps and things like that he's got a Model T truck and different things, but uh, he decided to sign on. Uh, he figured now that the trolley was in a nice place, a place where people could see it, a nice place to work on it, a nice uh, heated area and open. Uh, so uh, he jumped in and uh, uh, right away starts ripping into the trolley. You see he uh, pulled some of the front posts off. We tried to keep as much of the original trolley as we could, but some of those front posts were pretty bent up. So he took them home and uh, used his uh, carpentry skills to make brand new ones out of uh, donated ash. It was a uh, um, Fancher chair, uh, a company out of Falcon, New York, uh, donated much of the wood that we've used to restore the trolley and uh, a lot of the original trolley wood was ash and so he, he pretty much uh, reproduced the posts and then got them right back in there real quick and you see it already started working on the floor. I had gotten underneath the trolley to get the frame painted up a little bit and uh, work on it that way. I, I'm usually the guy taking the pictures, so I'm not in too many of them showing me doing anything, but uh, 
Uh, we just kept moving right along. I mentioned to you about how those gable roofs were heavy and kind of crushed the crown of the yeah. tower. Yeah. That was, uh, it made it look pretty, and it actually pushed the sides out too. So yeah. uh, you see Jim in the picture there, uh, uh, jacking up the roof again, trying to get it back to that nice curve on, on there. And uh, are there a lot of original parts? Well, we uh, were we, still. We've been we've been pretty lucky with what we had. We had the original dome lights, which came because one of the people that had the hunting camp or visited the hunting camp wanted to buy the trolley and use it as a peanut vending. Uh, uh, operation out of affairs and things like that. So we went up and took the lights out of the trolley uh -huh. and he never bought the trolley but he kept the lights and years later his wife died or he died oh. and his wife uh, got a hold of a guy she knew used to be involved with the trolley and said and he was an antique dealer and said uh, she still had the trolley lights and what should she do with them and she uh, he told her about the project and she donated them back to the trolley so we got the original dome lights that oh, were in good. the trolley back and uh, that was a big, and you'll see some of those in the picture here, but Jim, Jim went to work on that. We got the canvas roof ripped off and he started bending the wood to replace the uh, bad spots on the, on the roof itself. Uh, a lot of donations from different businesses in the area, just amazing support for the project. Just being at the train station and being more visible has been just fantastic. And here we are, uh, uh, Jamestown uh, Boiler, or Jamestown Steel Server, it's also known, Steel Service, it's also known as, donated a lot of the sheet metal. Pretty much all the metal that we've been using on the trolley came from them, all free of charge. And uh, uh, here we are uh, shaping the metal and putting it on the trolley and getting it drilled up. So, uh, and from there, we were lucky enough to have Gene Aversa with Hanson Signs. He uh, had a couple of his uh, employees volunteered their time. And then uh, Gene, of course, volunteered his facility and. Uh, uh, some of his materials to uh, prepare the seal panels, uh, clean them up, and then put primer on them. Uh, and then we got them back, all prime. That's not going to be the color of the trolley. That peach color, some people might like it, but uh, <laughs> that's not the original color. So, But that's the primer we had on it. You see we're starting to put the panels back on there. Yes. Uh, and uh, moving right along. Uh, so the, the next thing after that was the, getting the canvas roof back on. That was pretty exciting. We had to find a piece of canvas. We ended up finding a piece in Chicago. That was our first, one of our first major expenditures. It was uh, 400 some dollars to get the canvas. And uh, what kind of material? It's uh, a. Uh, is it? It's just a. Uh, it's got a number, a number. I think it was number 12 duck canvas or something like that. But it was a commonly used uh, thing on on trolley roofs back then, and uh, rail car roofs, and some boat roofs of the day. Uh, they uh, pretty much uh, used different chemicals and um, uh, sealed it and, and shaped it and put it down on there and then tacked it along the perimeter of it. To, uh, and here you can see we got the roof pretty much cleaned up. We got some of the catwalk back on top of it and uh, looks pretty much the way it did, probably new. Uh, put a million tacks in there. Jim spent a lot of time trying to bend that canvas around there. They said all you do is wet it down and it would uh, form fairly easily. It started to shrink into place. but he uh, had a heck of a time getting that thing to, uh, to form that way, but it ended up turning out pretty good. And uh, once the roof was on and we, we started working on the panel, spent a lot of time sanding and preparing the interior parts so we could resurface them. And here's how the, the ceiling looked once we got most of those panels cleaned up and put back up on there. Uh, a major part of the project was the uh, the uh, mahogany interior. You oh yeah, in I was these, wondering yeah. about that. Uh, we took every bit of it off, a million brass screws. I spent quite a bit of my time taking all the screws off and then putting the pieces in order so we could make sure we get them back where they belonged. And uh, Jim spent days and days sanding away, sanding away. You could always tell when Jim was there working because you could be anywhere in that place hearing the sandpaper going across the uh, the mahogany to get it all cleaned so up So it's again. the original mahogany it's, then? Yeah, everything that on mm -hmm. the trolley that we could we saved and is original. So the mahogany, once it was all sanded down, you can see in the, the photo again that the uh, we put a, another coat of stain back on the mahogany and then a, a coat of varnish and then we sanded the varnish and put another coat of varnish. Just a lot of back and forth monkeying around but uh, we did finally get it all done. And This is a picture of Jim putting the very first piece of mahogany back into the trolley. Uh, 
that was quite a day for us because it was actually marked the point when we were putting things on again instead of taking them off and, and working on them. And boy, yeah. there was a long period where there was a lot of dust and dirt going around down there. You sure. know, he looks pretty good for an 86-year-old man, well, doesn't he? I think in that picture he's actually 87 years old. He doesn't <laughs> like to talk about his age, but he does like to say that he was probably almost as old as the trolley and how fitting <laughs> it was that he was uh, there to try to bring it back along and get it uh, working again. Uh, so, But he's... Uh, Quite a dynamo there. He really keeps working on it. It's a it's a nine to five job for him generally, Monday through Friday. And you know, you're all invited to come down to the train station. Still, you're gonna have to uh, come in the back side door now with the comedy center in there. They've pretty much locked off the main front access to the trolley, but it's still accessible, which is good because they've offered to let us stay there for about another year, so we can keep restoring the trolley. Uh, here I am working on one of the windows, uh, Jamestown Glass Service in Jamestown. Uh, Brian Nelson, who was the manager, now uh, uh, we have uh, Ryan uh, Seekings. Uh, both of them were very helpful in donating uh, material and expertise and, and helped us get our windows back together and Jim's putting the windows in. Uh, we had an, a volunteer, Al Calla, help us with some of the window work. Uh, even uh, uh, Jim's uh, grandson, uh, Jeff uh, Michener working there on some of the glass and his uh, great-granddaughter, Jim's great-granddaughter there helping us out too, get some of that uh, stuff put back together. Uh, we took stock in where we were in the restoration project. That's, uh, uh, that's a picture of the trolley coming along pretty good there. It looked really good when I saw it back yeah. in January. Uh, well, I don't know if you'd seen it before that, but this is what it looked prior to that. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so it, it is kind of neat to go back and forth and see the uh, the progress there of uh, everything, sorry. But uh, anyhow, here we are back again. It was nice having a craftsman that knew how to make cabinets and things like that. Some of the uh, interior cabinets got destroyed when they connected the trolley to the original hunting camp. and oh. So Jim uh, remade the doors and we got more varnish and uh, stain on those and got those put back up. Uh, one of the biggest projects, things we had to do with the seats. I mean, this is an original photograph here from uh, the St. Louis Car Company uh, showing the interior of the trolley and the way the seats looked. And this was that plush uh, Spanish leather you talked about. Uh, yes. You can almost see Ricardo Montalban talking about the Corinthian leather that they <laughs> used to restore. I, I know. Uh -huh. I thought that was one of the most interesting things but, that I noticed yeah. in the book about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they were trying to make it look uh, uh, quite like a... Uh, fancy thing that people could really enjoy getting into and but we spent a lot of time uh, we uh, were able to take advantage of a place called the uh, uh, Pennsylvania Trolley Museum it's down in Washington PA and we met some of the guys down there they've been very helpful they have a 1926 St. Louis car uh, it was made the same year as ours but uh, not the same model oh. but we did find that the uh, the seat handles and the pedestals, if you see in the picture there, are similar. And we were able to borrow uh, these things from the museum, and we've used them as patterns that we were able to cast brand new things. Uh, Jamestown Bronze was very generous casting uh, brand new handles for us that we had to use on our 12 seats. And uh, we had Classic Brass is cleaning them up for us. One of our volunteers, uh, Bill Stevenson, was uh, nice enough to find a place where we get those polished up for us. Uh, it was enough information that we were able to make our first seat prototype. Uh, this is what we were going to use to show to the public and try to encourage them to uh, sign on to a uh, seat sponsoring uh, thing that we wanted to do. We, uh, we uh, put it out in the paper and on, uh, on the radio that we were asking people to sponsor a seat. It was a $600 seat sponsorship for each seat. And actually, the seat cost quite a bit more than that, but all the donated parts and things that we got from Jamestown Boiler, Jamestown Bronze, uh, uh, the uh, Jamestown Iron Works down there uh, offered a lot of the parts that we got from them uh, at cost, so we didn't have to pay. Any. So we were able to offer the seat sponsorships at $600, and all we give them in return was they get their name on a plaque that was going to be in the uh, trolley permanently. So we're able to go forward with that. Were you able to get genuine Spanish leather? No. <laughs> <laughs> we did hook up with a, uh, with, I'll go back to the seat, we did hook up with a local uh, upholsterer, uh, Tim Johnson from uh, Empire Upholstery. He uh, uh, gave us a pretty good deal on upholstery and he showed us a lot of different 
possibilities, but the leather would have been a too uh, cost prohibitive. So we went with something that looked awful lot like it. And this is what he recommended. And uh, with my wife's help and a few other people, we picked the color that we thought was pretty close to what we needed. Uh, but we, we went right into making the prototypes, uh, or we had the prototype done so we could start making the extra parts. So uh, we got more metal from Jamestown Boiler. Jim spent a lot of time cutting up the parts and shaping them. And we got a hold of Brent uh, Harkness, Lee Harkness's son. That, uh, and, is, and he's the other guy in the picture. Yeah, here. he's the other guy on the right there. He uh, uh, works on the uh, welding uh, uh, classes down at the JCC in the welding program. And he offered to do all the welding for, uh, for free. So we got all those pieces welded up for us. Uh, there's a picture that pretty much shows all the parts. We got Jamestown Ironworks uh, pedestals, that we got uh, Jamestown bronze in the foreground there on the left, the handles, extra handles. Uh, all the welding was done by the, uh, the college group there. And uh, all this stuff was uh, put together and it was all taken down to Phoenix Metal in Jamestown also. The people at Phoenix Metal came over and uh, we told them we were interested in getting these parts powder coated. So uh, we uh, uh, asked them how much it would be, and they asked. They told us, that, how does uh, for nothing sound? So that sounded pretty good to us. So we just delivered all these parts down to Phoenix Metal, and we had a wonderful tour of the facility down there to see how they do their powder coating. But that's not all they do. They do a lot of metal fabricating stuff. But it was quite impressive to see the conveyor line that our parts are going to go down and uh, see how the uh, parts will all get together. And Jim got to work right away making all the seat frames out of wood. And uh, so those are all ready to be upholstered. And uh, uh, another uh, volunteer, Quentin Johnson, I was in there. Jim uh, figured out how we were going to get that back seat uh, put in there, the back bench. And we actually had uh, the Mount Moriah Lodge here uh, in Jamestown sponsored the back bench for a $1,000 donation. And uh, we didn't have any trouble. Within a couple of weeks, we had all the seats and things uh, uh, sponsored. We got lucky with the Chautauqua Region Community Foundation. They did a, a uh, Giving Tuesday event and they put us up against four other people competing for money for projects. They had a $5,000 uh, prize to the project that got the most likes on their Facebook picture. Well, we found out real quickly that we were up against the Bemis Point Fire Department that was trying to get safety equipment for, oh. their, for their fire department. <laughs> and you know, I, I didn't want to get into one of those Chris Chrissy things where he the supposedly closed the bridge down and caused people to die. I can just see it. Well, all the money went to the trolley project instead of the life-saving equipment for Bemis Point. But we made a, such a good showing with our, with our uh, attempt here uh, that the uh, foundation uh, donated uh, one of the seats, uh, paid for one of the seats. That, uh, so it was, and uh, George Paddy III, through his, uh, one of his... Uh, uh, businesses donated a thousand dollars, six hundred dollars for a sponsorship, and uh, but uh, I don't know. It was uh, it was. I'm sorry, getting ahead of myself here. It was uh, quite a bit of, of sponsorships and things like that. So, but uh, we've had to move forward now with some of the things we're doing. Uh, another trip to the uh, uh, Trolley Museum in Pennsylvania got us uh, looking at the uh, the mechanisms for the door. I told you the door is almost exactly the same door that we would have on our trolley. And Jim and I went down there to measure up the door and uh, uh, so we could uh, get one made up. Uh, Jim will start working on that here pretty soon. Here's a picture of Jim again with some uh, donated wood from Fancher Chair. And uh, moving forward with getting the pieces cut up. And uh, it'll be uh, not too long before we're going to have that door in place. And uh, the next thing, too, we're working on is the floor. Oh. I don't know if you saw anything in the pictures of the floor. It's a it's a pattern you're just not going to find anywhere anymore no. anywhere. And they were actually individually cut rubber inlaid rubber pieces. Oh, really? And we were looking into the possibility of actually doing that. That uh, looks like a lot of rubber pieces. <laughs> like doing the thousands math, there would have been thousands? several thousand pieces of, of, of rubber. And at uh, seven dollars a square foot. Uh, we decided maybe we could find something else that would be similar. So we were fortunate. We uh, here's uh, uh, trying to match up some colors uh, uh, to see uh, the upper right is what we sort of settle on, I think. And the lower right, you can see the actual piece of the original floor. It's a little faded and uh, worn, but uh, we think we got a pretty good idea of the way it should be. And uh, I know I got a little ahead of myself. That's here. on top of a wood floor, the the rubber. 
Uh, it, or was it? Yes, it, it was yeah. just a, a basic wood floor, and uh, we uh, some of the sides apparently are missing here. But we did have a company that we were able to get a hold of that uh, uh, actually prints the floor. They print it on a white sheet that gets attached to the bottom of a thick, clear vinyl layer, and it actually looks like a printed vinyl flooring. When it goes down there, it looks pretty authentic. Oh, good. And we're actually in the process now. It's a, it, it ends up taking a several thousand dollar cost and turning it into a two thousand dollar cost, which uh, we'll be looking for donations for that right now. We think we, we're pretty close to being able to afford to pay for that ourselves. But uh, Well, I know that you were selling things uh, at the open doors. Uh, yeah. I bought three fridge magnets from you. Yeah, well, one of the, one of the things we did do at the open doors Jamestown, you see in the picture here, uh, like I said, just being at the train station, we had hundreds of visitors come down there and just little things we sold, little uh, prints and uh, things, of, you know, pictures of old uh, Jamestown in uh, Chautauqua County and just, you could see the turnout there. It was just amazing the number of people came and donated and I mean, it never failed after the event. We would get a few people that would donate to the com Community Foundation uh, fund for the trolley that we have. We do have two funds with the Chautauqua Region Community Foundation. We have a regular endowment fund, which is up to almost $20,000, which we're hoping will sustain the trolley in the future when we get enough money in there. The money that will take off of it from the interest will help uh, at least permanently house the trolley. And, and from there, it, uh, we will, uh, you know, other things go into a non-endowed fund, which is for work that is the uh, going on right now for the trolley and paying for that. So, uh, but I would like, you know, I, I sort of like I said, some of the slides disappeared because of uh, technical reasons, but uh, 1947 marked the end of actual trolley car service in uh, Chautauqua County. This is the JW and NW car that was the pretty much last trolley uh, service in Chautauqua County. Uh, it was a nice, to, uh, the cars made it into the uh, uh, color photograph era. This is from a color slide showing 312, which was the Cadillac car for the JW NW line, which if anybody remembers trolleys uh, in this area, they'll probably remember this one. This was the one that went to Midway Park and could go to Mayville and to Westfield. Uh, took a lot of guys to, to their efforts in the military during World War II and uh, brought them all home. And uh, But uh, unfortunately the car did not survive the scrapyard. Here's the uh, number 312 in its heyday and then uh, pretty much the wood was burned off and the cars were scrapped. So uh, that's kind of a justification. You know, we have just one trolley car left uh, to restore out of the hundreds, of several hundreds that were in the county. And the, this is pretty much it. And it's, uh, I think it's a good effort uh, if we can just find a place to keep it. Uh, you know, like I said, the National Train Day has been quite uh, a venue for us and the Open Doors Jamestown has. Uh, We've been in weddings. Here's a picture of, uh, uh, they actually wanted to have the wedding service where you could see the trolley. These oh. people are into all that retro uh, uh, industrial look and so they really wanted to, and here's somebody actually had their wedding picture taken in the trolley car while we were at the train yeah, station. Yeah, that's a cute picture. And it was really nice to see that. Uh, whoops. Uh, in Philadelphia, my wife and I visited down there trying to get some information about the trolley cars. Some of the early Jamestown trolleys were made by the Brill Company out of Philadelphia, and they've got a train station down there where they actually have a trolley car uh, uh, there. And uh, we tried to get the, the Comedy Center to uh, think that Lucy was actually on the trolley. Oh. <laughs> and we, uh, we, we uh, sort of photoshopped her into a picture of our trolley thinking we could convince them, well, if Lucy was on the trolley, we should have that at the... Uh, the brand new comedy center, but uh, we weren't able to convince them with that. But uh, here's a, an idea we had too of just uh, maybe putting a glass door there in the train station. Uh, or the comedy center might be able to have a, a, a little uh, display using the trolley car actually in the comedy center. I, I try to present uh, the idea that it's going to be a built in theater pretty much with all the extra seats we're going to have in there once they're put in there. And there's a, a, a Laurel and Hardy uh, during one of their comedy skits in front of a trolley car actually and I was trying to show that well you could have a TV screen in there or something and uh, actually leave the trolley right where it is have a nice uh, glass door where people could go 24-7 to see the trolley at the train station as well as during uh, their visits to the comedy center actually sit inside the trolley and use it as sort of a, a theater for uh, having one of their displays. We'll see if uh, I can convince somebody. I haven't really presented that to anybody. You're probably the first people to see that. Uh, we talked about having a little uh, 
display out in, in, in the, in the uh, uh, main area in Jamestown somewhere uh, showing the, the trolley car where people can actually go and see it. Uh, um, and uh, there is talk now too of the uh, engine house which is down below the train station restoring that and turning it into a rail type museum uh, having excursion trains out of there. This is a 1985 photograph I found showing this actual steam engine coming to the engine house down below. There is talk Lee Harkness had been behind a project to get that restored. Uh, I know the mayor, the mayor of the city of Jamestown uh, is uh, definitely interested in uh, uh, getting that last piece of the uh, river walk restored and, and used. Uh, and we got some group up in uh, Dunkirk that's thinking of bringing steam engines down there where you can actually get on a steam engine or even a working trolley car if we get the trolley car working and going down to the boat landing uh, up along Favannah Avenue and actually hooking up with some of the uh, uh, boats on the lake. The uh, uh, Chautauqua Bell perhaps could uh, have a ride where it comes down towards the city and gets on a trolley or a steam train and then comes down into the uh, train station area where it could uh, uh, possibly people could go to the comedy center and then take advantage of that and uh, also visit the little museum here and uh, who knows it's just uh, sounds like a lot things. of fun yeah here's the steamboat we could hook up with the, the Chautauqua Bell and perhaps get something going on that sorry about the phone thing but here's here's the museum this is how it, uh, we have a uh, Lee Harkness put together sort of a concept the way it would look when it was all restored and looking good uh, whether or not Lee will still be working on that project now that he's no longer the uh, general manager at the train station. The train station has been a, a tough thing. Uh, I don't want to sound like it's sour grapes that we may have to move out of there, but uh, uh, it's in a very expensive building to keep operating. The cost of the heat and electric mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, uh, employees to maintain it, it's, it's really uh, a very expensive uh, a thing. In the Comedy Center, people have moved in thinking that they were going to be able to make it uh, a solvent and, and something that will make money and bring uh, some more revitalization back to the community and more power to them. I, I mean, certainly I think there's most people are, are in agreement that it would be great if they could do that. And it's been awful nice of them that they're extending our ability to stay at the train station for probably another year before we're looking for another place. But, you know, they didn't have to do that. They could have told us we could leave and we're very happy we get to stay right where we are. Because once again, we are pretty much the last trolley car. So it's, it's undecided it. at this time then uh, where you're going after right. you're there. And uh, I'd like to think maybe we could stay right where we are and uh, they could figure out a way to, to use the uh, building auditorium that we would be able to provide for them. You know, that's still a possibility down the road. But uh, I, I always want to make sure we, we mention all the people that have been helpful. I mean, uh, the, uh, obviously the seat sponsor people have been very helpful. But these are all the different uh, volunteers and uh, companies so far that have helped us out. It's quite a long list and uh, it's amazing. Just uh, all you do is you mention this, we're working on a restoration project or something. And this, the number of people that are happy to uh, donate and supply things. And we've uh, got quite a following now of people that are want to see the trolley done. and. Uh, it's uh, pretty much going to happen. It's just uh, where we're going to end up is all that we have left to, to figure out. So, uh, Well, I'm sure you'll figure something out. Yeah. Well, we've got a few options now. And it was really a surprise to, to hear that maybe we could actually make it a working trolley. We had uh, Cummins Engine come down and talk to us about one of their little diesel engines that we might be able to stick under the trolley. We had uh, Scott Simmons up in... Uh, uh, Dunkirk, New York. He's the mm -hmm. uh, owner of a couple of little steam engines that he wants to bring down to the engine house and actually get involved with some sort of excursion uh, effort down there on a seasonal basis. Uh, you know, all these little pieces uh, come together and you know makes the uh, area, makes the county a place that people want to come and visit. And we're hoping that our little piece, if we can make it happen along with the Comedy Center and some of the other things going on in Jamestown and in the area, we can uh, encourage people to come here and uh, locate their businesses here and uh, invest in the area. I know some of the hotels that have built up around Jamestown now because of the Comedy Center's uh, plans and what's going on. It just, it all fits together. And even what you're doing here with your show is something that well, you're this, making people uh, aware of this. This will make people aware of it that uh -huh. probably haven't uh -huh. been well, aware. And you're going to be talking about other things throughout the county. and. Uh, you know, presenting other topics and things oh, yeah. and uh, just show oh, just yeah. uh, what we do around here and uh, give people more reason to invest in the county. And, oh, uh, sure. It, you happen. know, I, I know I've been on uh, 
train rides in other areas and they're so much fun like the the one in Titusville Pennsylvania where the train right uh -huh. goes down near Oil City and uh -huh. then turns around and comes back and yeah. the arcade they, in Attica is uh, right up the yeah, north of here uh, we've, a, we've been on that one a few uh -huh. times too um, one thing that was really interesting about the train ride from Titusville to Oil City is uh, it's all through the woods. The scenery uh -huh, is right. so gorgeous. Uh -huh. But once in a while, a tree will fall down on the track. <laughs> I, I remember the first time we went on a ride on it, uh, uh, on the way back from Oil City back to Titusville, the train had to stop and they carry a they carry a chainsaw with them so that they can... Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Well. Uh, because sometimes they have to cut up a tree and move it out of the way that so a, that the a, train can finish the ride. A lot of things that happened back then with trains and trolleys. There were a lot of accidents, unfortunately, and uh, some people were injured. But uh, uh, it was an interesting time, and uh, it's nice to have these types of little museums and things. Once again, it's, uh, it's probably a tough sell. I mean, it's really hard to store these large uh, survivors of the yeah. past, like the trolley and uh, steam engines. But, you know, if they're all gone, uh, then we got nothing to remember it right. by. And it'd be nice as a, a community we can get together and, and bring these pieces back and, and protect them and get some actual use out of them and so people can enjoy it and see how other people used to live years ago. And uh, we're hoping that uh, it'll bring some uh, more interest in the community and get people to stop down and uh, invest in what's going on here. So Now one thing I wanted to ask you about was uh, what how much did it cost to ride on the trolleys over the years do you well uh, the the very first trolley cars uh it was a boon for 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 people in general they had uh things called omnibuses they were horse-drawn trolleys almost but they didn't have track they were like a big carriage with a door in the back and it was getting up to 25 cents a ride for the people to get from from the boat landing along the muddy streets back to the hotel or the places they needed to go so uh, they mentioned that it was only a nickel to ride the trolley back then. For a nickel you get where you needed to go and a significant savings back then. But that seemed to be the general price for a ride on the trolley for quite a few years. Oh good. Uh, around a nickel a ride and uh, uh, during the heyday a lot of people, it was before the buses, the people would get on the trolley and go to work. I mean you could work in Falconer, the trolley went as far as Falconer and uh, some of the lines went all the way up to Westfield and Barcelona where uh, you could uh, hook, on, hook up with a trolley and go to work in the morning and then come home at the end of the day. You didn't have to worry about getting a horse and uh, buggy going and getting to work that way. You could just hop on the trolley and get to where you needed to go without trying to get along on the muddy streets with your horse and your buggy and all that type of thing. So. Right, and then have to have some place to put your horses during the day while you were at work right. and everything. I do, ha I do have a picture of, uh, of Willard Street that I uh, have in my regular slideshow that I do. And, uh, it was before the trolley and before the automobile. And there's a, if, you, if you're familiar with Willow Street, there's a, a very steep hill, then a leveled off area, and then another steep hill. Well, you look at the picture, there's nobody on the steep hill parts, but there's like 10 of these horse-drawn uh, wagons along the flat part. Oh. So you just, just another thing you don't even think about. Well, the people that lived up on the hill part couldn't park their, their uh, horse and buggy out on the street. They had to no. get them off the street where the people that lived on the flat part like to take advantage of having the horse and buggy already hooked up, ready to go uh, during the course of the day. And they could just go out and hop in and go down the street because uh, you just take certain things for granted about the lay of the land being so difficult back then, having to try yeah. to figure out how to get around. And you didn't want your cart to just start rolling down the hill no, all of a sudden. No. So, <laughs> uh. um, so there, uh, there was a time when uh, you could take a trolley all the way from Chautauqua County to Buffalo and another trolley that went to somewhere in Ohio, was it? Yeah, well, the, the, the trolley cars, uh, the, the, the local trolleys for the Jamestown area, there were only four ones, four of the trolley cars actually came into Jamestown, four of the, the lines. Uh, one went to Warren, uh, Pennsylvania and back. And uh, then the three in Jamestown, the Jamestown Street Rally pretty much stayed around Jamestown, went to Celeron, went to Falconer, uh, like that. Uh, uh, the Chautauqua Traction Line went up the Chautauqua Institution side of the lake, which went, it went from Jamestown through Saleron, Asheville, all the way up to Barcelona. Uh, and uh, so it had connections in Mayville to the, to the railroads in Mayville, and also had connections in, in Westfield to the railroads there. 
and the other trolley lines in, in Westfield also. Uh, the JWNW went up the Bemis Point, Midway Park side of the lake, all the way up to Westfield also. And you could hook up with the, uh, the, uh, um, the let's see, it was the, the Lake Erie and uh, Buffalo Traction Line. And that went from Buffalo to Erie. And of course, from Erie, you could go out to Ohio. So if you wanted to go as far as uh, Ohio or uh, Erie or Buffalo by trolley, you could actually get on a trolley in Jamestown, get up to Westfield, and then hook up with that uh, uh, Lake Erie and Buffalo traction line. Uh, so yeah, you could take a trolley all the way from Jamestown to Buffalo, and that was uh, Ken Springer's book there. I think the title was it. Right, uh, right. So. That's where I uh, uh -huh. got my ideas uh, for things to ask uh -huh. you about. Uh -huh. So... Yeah. It's a pretty interesting book, it really is. Yeah. Well, there's quite a bit in there, and if you're interested in history, it's uh, certainly uh, uh, worth picking up. I, I vouch for a lot of the dates that are in there, uh, at least related to the Jamestown Street Railway. And uh, so, it's, uh, and Ken's been very generous. He's donated some of the books to us that we've sold at the different events, and we use that money to the Trolley Restoration Project. And he's uh, very active in trying to keep the train station the train station and keep the trolley and uh, train uh, ideas alive. So uh, uh, he was one of the guys that went with us down to the, uh, the uh, James, uh, Pennsylvania Trolley Museum uh, that day and uh, checked out the trolley car. So but, uh, it's uh, quite a project. And like I said, it's pretty much the last trolley car we have left that we can save. So it would be nice to be able to save one of them. Oh, uh, yeah. We got a lot of public support. Our biggest issues now are uh, getting wheels for it, figuring out how that's going to go down, coming up with a couple thousand dollars for our floor, because the seats are all paid for, and it's uh, uh, and all the parts pretty much we need are paid for now. Uh, it's just a matter of figuring out uh, the wheels, how we're going to move it around, getting a coat of paint. We have to paint it too, which isn't going to be a big deal, but maybe we can find somebody interested in donating their services with the painting of it, and uh, then ultimately where we're going to end up. And uh, we'd hate to see it outside. That's why we have the endowment fund with the Chautauqua Region Community Foundation so that hopefully someday it'll generate the income we need to uh, uh, permanently house it or at least permanently give it a place to, out of the weather. So during those periods when people aren't too excited about trolley cars, uh, we'll be able to protect it. And then when uh, it comes back to the fore again, we'll be able to bring it out and show it. Now, whether I'll be around at that time, I doubt it, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Well, how can people go up? about um, getting a hold of you or uh, who do they get a hold of or and how? Well, we do, have, we do have a website, uh, jamestowntrolley.org. Just visit that if you're uh, uh, computer inclined. Uh, we have uh, contact information on there. My name is Bob Johnston. I do have a cell phone, 716-338-5051. I'm not afraid to give it out. Anybody interested in the trolley and the project is welcome to call me or have any memorabilia related to the trolley history, their family members or something like that. It would be great to be able to talk to them and uh, see if we can add a little bit more to the mystery of the trolley car era. But uh, yeah, we do have a website. Uh, you can donate to the uh, Chautauqua Region Community Foundation. You can call them up and tell them you like to donate to the, one of the funds. Uh, the non-endowed fund allows us to use the money right away to work on the trolley. Uh, and then uh, the endowment fund is for the future of the trolley down the road. The Chaka Region Community Foundation has been very generous with uh, managing the money for us and allowing people to uh, donate so they can make a tax deduction because that gives us a not-for-profit status through them. So that uh, worked out pretty good there. People can come to see the trolley uh, when, whenever the, um, the train depot is, if is we're, open? If we're at the trolley car, and generally from Monday through Friday we're there, and not so much on the weekend, even though you can call me on the weekend, I'll get you in to see it if you've got some people from out of town or something. Uh, once again, you just give me a call at 338-5051, uh, and I'd be happy to uh, take you down there and show it to you, let you look at it. But right now, with the Comedy Center is, uh, in the building, there's some concerns with concerti uh, security and things like that. So once uh, these things get reasoned out, that might change a little bit. But right now, the only way into the trolley car will be when we have the door unlocked on that back uh, on the Washington Street Bridge side of the trolley. There is a man door that we have unlocked when we're in there. Mm -hmm. You're welcome to come down and uh, go through the door and visit us there and talk to us. We're always happy to show people the trolley. And we actually have handicap access. We have a big door we can open up, and you can actually drive your car right in there right now and oh, check it out. Oh, uh, oh your course, car. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we do have insurance now for the trolley. I think so anything related to the trolley car is insured, so I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, 
But yeah, uh, you're welcome to come down and visit us, uh, see what's going on uh, Monday through Friday. Or if you're not sure if we're there, give me a call and I'll let you know. And I can even let you in to see it if you are so inclined. So, so you said that your wife has helped you out quite a bit with the project. Then. Well, she's, she's been very supportive. I do spend quite a bit of time down there now. I feel a little guilty if Jim's down there all by himself working on the trolley car. He does... He has turned it into a nine to five job. But when, I, when we need help figuring out colors and, and uh, uh, some of the uh, textures and things like that, she's been always been very helpful and, and very supportive. If I, I have an event or thing to do and I've forgotten something at home, I'll give her a call and she brings it right down and then she'll show up and, and help me by uh, you know, being there and helping us support what's going on there. A lot of volunteers, a lot of people that are interested and they come down and help us out at some of the events and things like that. Like I said, I'm a little concerned that we're not going to have the exposure that we've had because the events are going to, the nature of them is going to change. It's uh, just not, we're going to, whether it'll be a national train day this year or not at the train station is extremely up in the air right now. And I, right now I would be very, I, I doubt it. But uh, we'll see. Uh, we're all in transition right now. We've got a few people that are working. Uh, hopefully Lee Harkness is going to be able to, to keep working with us and help us work things out. And if not, some other people might step up and we'll see what we can do. But uh, in the meantime, we just keep plugging away and getting things done, and who knows? <laughs> uh, so. um, now, I, I was talking to one of the guys that was helping you, the one, one whose last name is Kayla. Kayla? Kayla. Al Kayla. Yeah. Kayla um, I had fun talking with him the day of the open doors. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, is he retired also? I used to work with Al and I used to work with the city together. We were both with the Department of Public Works, and... Uh, he, uh, we got to be pretty good friends, and I, I needed extra help or something like that. I always give Al a call. I could always count on him, and he would show up for some of these events. It's amazing sometimes. I mean, there were times during that doors open, we had like 20 people in the trolley. We had 50 people milling around the trolley, and you know, it's just Jim and I there. If Jim's occupied talking to somebody and I am, then we just have nobody to accommodate the rest of. Them. So my wife will show up, Al will show up, but Quentin Johnson has shown up, and. These people help us out uh, talking to some of the people, and they're all interested in the project. They're fun to talk to with their own interests and in, uh, in their experiences with the trolley car. So, yeah, it's been really helpful uh, being able to take advantage of some of the people that are involved with the project with us. So, oh, that's good. Great. So, and, yeah, when you came down and visited us, the doors open. I mean, if we hadn't been there, you probably wouldn't have had a chance to actually come in and see the trolley and uh, well, that, be exposed to the project. That and, was the day that I asked you if you would be on the right? TV show. I tell you, just being at that train station and being able to take advantage of the events, it's, I mean, we've probably put in uh, close to $3,000 in cash uh, in, uh, in the trolley restoration project. And this is from money that has gone to the... Uh, through the, what we've collected at some of these events and things like that, selling our little things and people just donating. And uh, uh, the seed project, we got close to eight thousand dollars plus for all that, and uh, uh, just the people that have donated to the non endowment fund in general. I mean, it's just. I think by the time we're done, we're going to have close to fifteen, twenty thousand dollars in the trolley car itself, and that doesn't even include all the volunteer, the donated materials and things like that. Oh yeah. And but it's just it's really when we've needed things, uh, the money comes or the help comes or the donations come, and it's just uh, it's really amazing. But there's a lot of people that are thinking this is a good thing, and uh, like I said, if we could just find a good place for it, to be just I think it'd be a perfect. Uh, mix there to have a little bit of the train rail related history inside the the train station along with the comedy center and actually get some use out of the trolley car that way not that i'm opposed to make it a working trolley but you know having it outside and exposed to the weather a lot requires upkeep and things right. that will be right. an additional expense and effort and uh, needing more volunteers to do so it's it's all still kind of new and i think hopefully we're all going to get up to speed eventually and and make it all work so everybody's happy and uh, you know I'm pretty confident that it will work out so yeah I, I believe it will yeah well, we'll see we'll see so once again anybody wants to give me a call has any ideas thoughts uh, old trolley memorabilia uh, just three three eight five zero five one give me a call I'm working more than happy to talk with you about the project and uh, uh, I appreciate you inviting me on your first show. I hope it goes okay. I hope uh, it turns out all right, and I hope I didn't talk too much. Oh, no. And, uh, <laughs> uh, sorry about the uh, couple of the slides that were missing, but we had a little trouble deciding how things were going to get a show on here. I want to tell my wife that I was able to keep my hair 
from going to the Napoleon look, which she tells me is a very uh, <laughs> hard to look at. So she said, keep uh, <laughs> pushing my hair back from time to time and she'd be happy. And so that's another thing. My wife's always helping me with things like yes. appearance and stuff. So. Right, <laughs> uh, helping you look good. Yeah, yeah. Well, she told me what shirt to wear and everything like that today. So I very much appreciate it. Well, you've also spoken <laughs> on, on the radio, you said, oh, about yeah, your yeah. project uh, also. Was that the Jamestown I, radio? Jim Roselli gave us an open invitation to stop by any time with the... Uh, WJTM uh, uh, AM radio and I would stop by and he would be graciously talk to me uh, at length about the project and he would talk about it and uh, it was funny the, the day we had the prototype all together I went in and talked to him and by the time I got home we already had a call from a, a gentleman that lived in Lakewood said he wanted to sponsor a $600 seat so just just like that we had a sponsor from being on shows like this and on the radio and uh, it's amazing. There's people out there that, uh, you, know, there's, you know, a lot of people say, I'll ask them if they've heard about the project, because we've been in the paper a lot of times, and on the front page, too. And I, that's another thing I tell Jim all the time, is if you comb your hair a little bit more and take better care of yourself, we'd be on the front page more instead of buried back in the paper, because one of the times he... We were on the second uh, section of the paper, so Jim got a kick out of that. But, I mean, a lot of people say, well, I didn't see it in the paper because I don't get the paper. Well, um, you know, we'll have to have you back on the yeah. program again when uh, you're finished with the restoration yeah. project yeah. so that we can see photos of uh, what it looks like completely finished. Well, we very much appreciate it, and I, I hope, I wish you luck with your prod program here, and hope you get some good guests. And uh, Well, people I, I have a lot of good guests lined up, yeah. and th I, thank you for being the first one. Yeah, I did have an idea for the trolley. If things don't work out, we could maybe make a vegan restaurant up here, a little trolley car with uh, selling, uh, uh, no? Good idea? I, I <laughs> like it okay. yeah uh, if we could get people to come and eat at it <laughs> yeah well we'll paint the trolley green put some vegetables on it it'd be great you know just to, yeah so we'll keep you in mind if it doesn't work out okay okay <laughs> Thank thanks you a lot you have a good day okay that's the end of our first episode um i have a lot of interesting guests lined up um we'll only be on once every two weeks at, at least at this time, it might change in the future, but for now it'll be every two weeks. My next guest in two weeks is going to be um, Steve Watterson, the public relations person from the Resource Center. The following week, uh, the 19th of March, we're going to have Ann Jackson from uh, the Beaded Forest. Uh, her and her husband make really high quality wooden items and beaded items. Um, and then we're having um, a deer hunter on the first weekend, the first Saturday in, Ma uh, in April. So for those of you who are fans of deer hunting, uh, that should be an interesting one for you. And um, that's all for today. Um, we're pretty much finished for now. I'll see you in two weeks.